I'm now in Onshape and I have my image imported. And now I'm gonna go to my Part Studio One and I'm gonna start a sketch on the front surface. I'm now gonna rotate my cube to the front so I can see what I'm doing. And the first step is we need to drop the image in. So we're gonna to have to go over to where it says DXF. Oh, and we hit the drop down menu here and we're gonna say insert image. And the images are images that we have already uploaded. So I'm gonna grab that image and I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to go and drag this so that the corner is on that origin. So I'm going to use a coincident tool. I'm going to grab the origin and grab the bottom left hand corner of the image. And I'm going to decide how big I want it. Now, I can only pick one size. If I pick the width, the height will be set by the width. I'm going to pick the height because that's the bigger size. And I imagine this thing being mm, maybe two and a half inches tall. So I'm going to take and go to the dimension tool, select the side of the thing, and go 2.5. And that's close to what it was. But now I have my uh, image locked in place. All my edges are black. That means this is exactly where it is. This can't move. That is always important to do before we go on. So now let's take and start tracing. So we're going to be using the poly, the uh, spline tool. And the trick to this is practice and patience um, and ending your splines at hard corners. So I'm going to go and upper start my going around the ear. So I'm going to start, I'm going to click here. Here, here, here. And I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in on my thing. And I want this corner between the ears to be really sharp. So I'm going to right click. Or sorry, I'm going to do double click. To make sure I don't have a little, oh, I have a little detail at the end. Oh, I hit escape. I'm going to delete that. We're going, I'm going to take this point here. I'm just going to bring it down. And let's see if I can delete that point. Oop. Now, I'm spending a little time focusing on here because I want that line coming straight. And I don't want it to loop on itself because that will cause problems when I try to actually do it. Maybe this can come in a little bit. And I can tweak these geometries a little bit to make them look good. Now I'm going to start another spline. And I'm going to try to grab onto the last spline I did. If I miss that, I'm going to have to then fix. Okay. If I hold the shift key, it won't guess where I'm going. If I, normally it's going to try to sort of line things up. So now I'm going, following this edge all the way down. I can zoom out a little bit because I don't need to be, I don't need all those little ripples. And it's sort of up to you to pick which features are critical and which ones aren't. Okay, I'm gonna round this corner. By putting more clicks, I can get a more tighter detail. I could end there, but I want to make this line go a little farther. So I'm using my mouse, I'm middle clicking to drag, and then I'm Zooming in and out. Basically, anytime I do a hard corner, I want to zoom in. As we get to smoother, longer sections, I can pull out and use fewer clicks. So it's really just a matter of practice and patience. And again, fix most of these points after the fact. I need to. Putting two points in short succession does help you get a sharper corner. And I'm just roughly going. Now, the nice thing about this is if I screw up and it's not exactly like they recommend, they show, like the uh, image, it's okay because once we finish this, no one's going to see the image, the 
image again. You're just going to see your trace. So, but if you have weird ripply lines, that will show up in the print. So again, I have lots of practice with this. I don't expect this to come out on the, on the first try. I'm going to try to find an ending point soon so I can sort of finish this spline and not have to worry about messing it up. So pushing on that scroll wheel to get into the uh, to drag stuff around is critical.